Hello and welcome to this tutorial on uh, how we can interpret the GPIO uh, register lookup table which I've provided on Blackboard and in Doubtfire uh, which will be immensely useful for uh, all the labs we're doing uh, in the uh, Raspberry Pi section of the unit. Uh, and I wanted to spend a bit of time today just going through how we interpret the table. Now the table I'm talking about, and I'm just going to bring it up and then take it away again, is this table, uh, which I'll admit, upon first looking at it, it may scare you, it may seem a little unreadable, uh, but actually, once you understand what's there, you'll find that it's not just useful, but actually not too difficult to interpret. In fact, basically, the whole way we program GPIO pins is, is really just a pattern that you have to understand, and once you understand it, uh, it will become very uh, natural. Uh, well, natural. It'll become something better than scary anyway. Uh, now, I'm, I'm showing this diagram because this is basically uh, from our Lab 7, uh, what you'll be asked to wire up. And I'm going to sort of focus on how you would find out what bits need to be set in order to turn the LED that we've got here connected up to the Raspberry Pi. How would we do that? So what you'll see here, just a note, is that the uh, pin that controls the LED is this one here. This is a ground pin here. So this is just bringing back the, um, the to close the circuit. But this one here, the sixth pin from the left in this orientation, uh, is actually GPIO 18, which you might be able to pick out there. And so this is the GPIO 18 is in fact the register or the GPIO that we need to control uh, in order to make this happen. So let's just uh, remember that. So that's what I'm going to focus on uh, in the diagram. And I've actually used blue to highlight where those particular GPIO 18 operations are happening. But I'll get to that in a second. So let's look at this, this quite large table and understand what's in it. So basically, the first thing to note is that going down the page, you can think of as being memory, right? And in fact, if you look at this column here, you'll see that we've got a memory address, which is the base address, this one in red, of the entire set block of GPIO registers, which go all the way down to this point. Okay? And just to confirm, you can see that they go by fours because, of course, if that's a 32-bit register, then it's going to be made up of four bytes. Each byte is eight bits. So here's the zeroth byte, the first byte, the second byte, and the third byte. And then, of course, the fourth byte from here will be the next register. And then the eighth byte will be the start of the next register. Okay, so note that our registers are going up in fours, right? The beginning of each register is as a, as a multiple of four in offset from the base address. Okay, so this address here, how do I know that? Well, that's purely the hardware specification. It is completely and utterly defined by the particular model that we're using. In this case, the model 2B or model 3B Raspberry Pi. Uh, earlier versions, I think B plus might have the same, but earlier than B plus, you would actually have a different number there. And you need to know that. If you don't know that number, then none of this works. Uh, and in fact, you could get quite unpredictable behavior. And so it's really, really determined by the hardware. Because there's nothing between us and the hardware. We're, we're bare metal programming. So we have to be precise about these things and hardwire such things. Okay, so, so I've told you that now that we have memory addresses, these are all blocks of memory, just 32-bit um, registers going down the page. So what do they mean? So let's look at the first block here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six registers which have bits within them. Uh, in fact, three bits per GPIO uh, to control each GPIO, or in fact, to program it, just to be clear. That is that what we have to do before we actually write something to a pin or any other um, thing we want to control, we have actually have to first indicate that that's what we want to do. So we program a GPIO for what we want to do. So in our case, it's GPIO 18. Now, if we look up in this information here, we can find for each GPIO what bits are associated with programming it. So for example, GPIO 0 has bits 0 to 2, that is 0, 1, and 2, as the three bits used to program it. 
For writing, we only need to set the first of those three bits for the GPIO that we want to write to. So in our case, GPIO 18 is down here, and we see here that bits 24 to 26 are dedicated to GPIO 18. And if we want to write to it, then the first of those three bits, 24, is the bit that we actually have to set. Okay, so that's how we know which bit we have to set by looking up this table here. So what does that actually mean in terms of code? So thinking about this in terms of your task, to program the particular GPIO register, you first need to set up the 32 bits that you want to write to memory. Right? So the pattern is this, you set you put one into a register that you're going to use to hold it. You then shift it by however many bits it needs to be shifted so that it gets to that position. So in this case, 24, that puts the one in the 24th place in that register R1. And then you'll see here, what we're saying here is store the contents of R1 into the memory location R0 plus four. So R0, well, what is R0? Well, we say up here, R0 is holding the base address of the GPIO registers. 4 says add 4 to that, which is here. And that is the beginning of this 32-bit register, which means that if I write R1, the contents of R1, which is 32 bits, into this location in memory with the 24th bit set to 1, then I have set the 24th bit to one in the correct place in memory. So hopefully you can see what's happening there. So there's a pattern. We put one into a register in the beginning of it. We shift it however many places it needs to go, and then we write it to the location in memory. So how did I know four? Well, I know four because GPIO 18, according to this diagram, exists in this block, which starts at four from the offset here. And R0 holds the actual base address there. All right, so in, in the code that you'll look at, you'll often see that happening, that particular line of code. Now, that only does the first bit, which is to tell the GPIO that you want to write to it. Now we actually have to do the writing, which brings us to the next set of registers. We've actually got three blocks here. We've got a block here and a block here and a block here. And hopefully you can see what each of these blocks is doing based on just the comments here. This block is all about writing one, right? Or writing on, setting the bit to high, if you like. Uh, so for GPIO 18, we need to find the bit within this, uh, well, it's actually 64 bits allocated here, but because 18 is in the first block, it'll be in the first set of 32 bits, we have to find the right bit to set to one, to write one to that particular pin. So if we come over here, again, this, this information will help you, but actually it's pretty straightforward. Bit zero here refers to GPIO zero, bit one refers to GPIO one, and so on. So bit 18 will refer to GPIO 18. And so all we need to do is set the 18th bit of this particular register to one if we want to turn the LED on. Okay, and so this code you see here shows you how you would do that. We write just like, and you'll see the same pattern as we saw up here. Um, we write one to the register, so here we are down here doing it. We then, in this case, we shifted 18 places to put it in the right place. And just like before, we have to then write that to memory and we take the address R1, sorry, we take the contents of R1 and we copy that to the location R0, which is still the same as before, the base address of the whole GPIO register block. R0, in this case, plus 28, which is the 28th byte from the start. And because we're writing the contents of R1, which will be a whole lot of zeros with one at the 18th place, uh, then we will have set the 18th bit in here to one, which says write one to GPIO 18. Now, if I wanted to turn it off, while you might think it's as simple as turning that to a zero instead of a one, it's unfortunately not quite as simple as that. You actually have to use a separate block 
of memory for writing a zero. So in this case, if I want to write zero to GPIO 18, which would be effectively saying turn off the LED, then I just do the same exact thing, but I do it for this block of memory instead. So I set up the register, I put a one, I shift it 18 places, and again, you can see here, I can look up each GPIO to find out how many bits I need to shift across. So here we've got 18. And then in this case, the really the only difference between writing on or off is the base address that I give it for the memory I write to. In this case, it's an offset of 40 rather than 28. Okay, but everything else is the same. So that's it. That's the pattern, right, for using this table. The only thing to be cautious about um, is that while in, you might think it's as simple as knowing which number GPIO you're going for and then you just shift it that many places, that won't work for a GPIO that is greater than 31 because once you get to 32 or above or all the way to 54, you're going to be in this block of memory, not this block. This, sorry, this register and not this register. And so, for example, if you had, if you wanted to write one to GPIO 32, that is actually bit zero of this register. Okay, so you wouldn't shift it 32 because that's obviously larger than the, um, the register can hold. So it's in the next register now and you just have to shift the difference. And so this table just shows you here. So if I was, for example, writing one to GPIO 39, well, that by this you can see means shifting seven places from the start to get the bit to the seventh place in the actual um, register that we're actually writing to. And of course in this case we would write to R0 plus 32, not R0 plus 28 like this one was. So just be aware that for GPIO numbers greater than 31, you will have to be, uh, you have to take into account that you're in this block and not this block. All that means is you don't have the convenience of taking the number of a GPIO and just shifting it that many places. That's really all I'm saying. Last thing I'll point out, oh, actually two last things to point out. One is we've also got a block here for reading. Uh, when we program the GPIOs for reading, uh, we can read the value that we get from it, which is obviously going to be 0 or 1, from the same sort of pattern. Again, we can read from the bit that's associated with the GPIO. We'll get to that in a later week, but uh, be aware that there's also a reading block here. The last thing I want to show you is at the bottom is just a diagram of the header pins, uh, which are all here in both diagrams. It's really just the same diagram in different formats. Uh, and you can see here which GPIO registers are mapped with which particular pins. Um, you've also got ground pins, which is what this symbol means. So, you, for example, in, in Lab 7, you've been asked to connect up the, uh, the lead wire with uh, the 12th pin, which is the sixth one down. That's GPIO 18, as we've said. But also to connect it with the ground pin at um, pin 6. And you'll see here, if you follow that line, it comes all the way down, it's a ground pin. Okay, and on this you can see the same thing. There's the ground pin there, and this is the, the associated label. And here is GPIO 18, which you can see 18 there. So they're just the same, same sort of information in different formats. Um, so if you wanted to use other pins, for example, perhaps you wanted to connect another LED up with, for example, this pin down here. Well, that is GPIO 16. So be aware that the numbering system isn't exactly um, straightforward. It's not, not just sort of down the page linear. Uh, and there's other available pins around the place as well. Uh, okay, so that's a basic rundown of the table. I hope that's helped. Uh, there's information over here which is just summarizing the same sorts of things again. Um, I have not myself found that as useful, but I think just knowing how to understand this stuff is all you really need. Uh, note that there is other, if you've got a model 2B, this won't work for 3B, but you can also control the power light or the power LED and the action LED on the actual chip itself. Um, we used to use this as our labs, but now with model 3B, we can no longer access them via the GPIO registers. But um, they are the settings you would need for um, controlling the power and uh, action LEDs on the actual Raspberry Pi chip. Um, Anyway, that's it. Hopefully uh, you've got some clarity around this and the best thing is to keep practicing, uh, have a play with different GPIO pins and see if you can find the correct bits to set uh, and, and of course talk to your tutors if you need to. Good luck.